Good evening, friends. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship this evening for Christmas Eve. We are delighted that you are here. We especially welcome guests and visitors here with us tonight. Uh, and uh, I'll give some more instructions later on when we get closer to communion for tonight. But I'd like to invite us now to a brief moment of silence as we center our hearts and minds for worship. And I invite you to stand as you are able, and everything you need for worship should be printed for you in your bulletins. And I invite us to uh, join with me in the confession and forgiveness printed there for you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior, let us confess our sin. God of life. You promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the working of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. And you may be seated for the Christmas Eve candle lighting and uh, by the garbage field.
Light is a central image for God's presence through scripture, a pillar of fire to give them light. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and now the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus will declare with his own lips, I am the light of the world, and we celebrate tonight his birth. The one who is the light, we know that he comes precisely because the people are walking in darkness. We don't need a flashlight at noon on a sunny day, but once the sun goes down, we need street lights, headlights, and any other light we can muster. In Jesus, everyone and everything is illuminated. The light of all mankind comes to dispel all our darkness. And he shines everywhere because there is darkness everywhere and in each one of us. Jesus is the one who finally reveals the world and all its inhabitants for what they truly are. And with deep love and compassion, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, sees our every gift and every flaw and chooses to wrap us all in his own light. This is the very foundation of the good news. Let us pray. God of all light, we come before you in many ways bruised, broken, and cracked apart. Thank you for shining your light into these cracks, bringing your healing presence to our deepest need. We know that in our lives and in this world, there is still great darkness. Help us to see the darkness for what it is, that we might not fall under its seductive sway. Send us into places of great need with the godly virtues of your kingdom, that we might live as lanterns for your light. And may we be reminded that the light of the world is first revealed in the humble simplicity of a little child, who we are now compelled to receive in childlike faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
You made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence. And in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus Christ. He it is who gave him 
himself for us, that he might redeem us from iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. I'd like to invite any children to come forward for the children's message. Just like a flashlight can be turned on and off, 
That's how sometimes we can feel. And so I want you in this Christmas season to think about your light and how you can share your light with others. You know, I gave everyone, all of our members, um, uh, I gave them all some homework. Did you hear about the homework that I gave all the members of the congregation? How many of congregational members remember what your homework was? <laughs> to bring one person with you to Christmas Eve service. To bring one person with you. And some of you brought more than that, and so you get extra gold stars. <laughs> but that's okay. So uh, we are called to share the light of Christ. And so by bringing others to come to church and to share the light of Christ, then they too are living out their baptismal promises. And But you know what? We can't do that alone. Sometimes it takes people like you to be able to share the love of God. And you know what? You may sit here and say, well, Pastor, I can't talk about God. I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know what? Eleanor, can you stand up? Can I, can I use you as a guinea pig? Okay. And I, Eleanor, when I came in, what did I give you? What did I say to you? I, I said, you're one of my one of my favorite people. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? And what did I do after I said that? I gave her a hug. I did. So is sharing a hug with another person a way to share the love of God? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that really hard to do? No. No, it's not hard at all. So you know what I want to ask y'all to do right now? Can you all stand up? And can you go find someone that you don't know? And I promise no one here is going to bite you. I think. I see a lot of faces out there that maybe I don't know as well, but that's okay. But I want you to go find someone you don't know and say, may I give you a hug? And if they say yes, give them a hug. Can you do that? Can you do that, Elmer? Okay, go. Go, go, go. Go find someone to hug. And say Merry Christmas when you hug them. <laughs> say Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you got to say Merry Christmas too. Do it. Okay. And then come back and be good. No. <laughs> Give her a hug. I bet she will like a hug. There you go. Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See? Now, was that really hard to do? That took us, what, like less than a minute, right? So, see, you are sharing the light of Christ when you did that. And so all you have to do is do that more often every day. So you think that's something you can do every day? Give one person a hug that you don't know? Sure. We all can do that. Even some adults out here should do that, too. And you know what? Sometimes that's really hard to do when, when adults get all busy and we sort of get into our head about stuff. But we have to remember that everyone wants to feel loved and wants to receive love. And so we have to, that's what that center candle right there is all about. Yeah, I know. I know. It's very exciting. And so the love of God is, is the light that we have to share with others. And so that's what I want you to try to remember in this Christmas season, okay? So let's pray about that. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the love sent uh, in, in, in a bundle of joy for your son, Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for these children and their parents for bringing them here tonight. Lord, inspire us by your spirit so that we are willing to share your love with everyone we meet. So that your light continues to shine in this dark world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming up. Go back to your seats. And with the congregation, please stand for the gospel acclamation. Oh, we're going to sing it. Yeah, that is the gospel
glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who meet favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these things, all in her, all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord.
born. We gather with the angels and the shepherds and we kneel at the manger worshiping the child who is the God incarnate. Love personified, Emmanuel. The light blazes out from the stable, defying the darkness, warming our hearts, lifting our spirits and the conviction that love wins. This is a beautiful moment. But some of you are here because you really want to be here. Some of you are here because somebody else really wants you to be here. Some of you are here because that's just what you do on Christmas Eve. You go to church. Some of you are here because you've got to go to church before you can open your presents. And then some of you believe in the Christmas story is absolutely true. And then some of you are like, Come with great anticipation and joy while others struggle to get through this holiday season. Some of you are regular church attenders who did your homework. And it's no surprise that some of you are here tonight who I have never seen before. But that's okay. There's grace for that. I say all that with amazement and wonder and I'm, I'm really not too concerned about whether or not but there's something else that really strikes me about this night. Every year I continue to be amazed at the power of the Christmas story to attract and call people to one single solitary place. No matter the circumstances, no matter what it's about, no matter whether you believe it or not, what draws us here on this night? Well, I think for most of us, we're wondering whether or not the story is still true. Is Christmas still happening? So is it real for you today as it was for the shepherds that holy night many years ago? So let me be absolutely crystal clear about this. Regardless of who you are, why you are here, how often you come to church, whether you believe or don't believe, what has happened or not happened in your life, what have you done or left undone, Christmas is real. You can count on it. It's still true and it's still happening in all of our lives. And I came up with a new Christmas word as I was working on this sermon, and I'm calling it thisness. It's the thisness of this season. The thisness is my new Christmas word. I know it sounds strange, but stick with me for a moment. I want each of us to find the thisness in your own life. It's essential to Christmas. Thisness is all the qualities, all the characteristics, all the gifts that make you uniquely who you are. It's what makes the person next to you uniquely who they or we, who he or she is. It's what makes your spouse, your child, your parents, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your neighbor, the stranger exactly who they are and like no one else. It's what you love most about the other. And it's also what drives you crazy about that person. It's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of him or her. It's the thing that describes that person to a T. It's the thing that you most admire about him or her. The thing that you least like about him or her. It's all the peculiarities, all the, the particularities. It's the perfume, the sharp tongue, the quick wit, the short fuse. For me, it's a big kid. It's the way someone tells a joke or maybe tells the same joke every year when you see them. It's the way he or she calls or shows up just when you need that person. It is the generosity or thoughtfulness of another person. It's a smile, a laugh. The way your parents were always there for you. The way he or she believes in you, encourages you. It's the talkativeness or the silence. It's the honesty, the loyalty, 
It is the business. Why is this business important? Listen to part of the story again. To you is born this day. The angel tells the shepherds, let's go see this thing that takes place. The shepherds say to one another, the shepherds find Mary and Joseph and this child, this day, this thing, this child, thisness. The day is unique and peculiar. The circumstances, the people, the places, the happening. There is no other day like this one. And this day, something important is being announced to you. This day, something is being fulfilled in you. This day, something is being born for you. This day, something is being promised to you. This day, light shines in your darkness. And so, what does your thisness have to do with this child? Everything. When we come forward to receive the sacrament, we all come forward as beggars with hands extended in our own business, waiting to expect and receive this child. When I give you that sacrament, we say the body, this body of Christ given for you. And so your thisness matters. Your thisness is what marks you as a disciple of, of Christ. Your thisness is what makes you a child of God when you were marked and sealed with the cross of Christ. And therefore your thisness was received by a loving God who says no matter what brokenness you have, no matter what is plaguing your heart and your mind, your thisness is enough for the God of God, God of grace and mercy whose love is big enough and large enough and the grace of God that is able to say, I got this. My love has got you covered. Receive it now, my son, my daughter. And so your thisness means everything. Your light continues to shine within you. You have to simply choose whether or not you want your beam to be extended. Whether or not you want to share your light with another person who may need to receive it. Your thisness is everything. And it's this child that came for all of us. For all of humanity. No one is except, ex exempt from the love of God. Romans 39, 839 says that God is big enough, wide enough, that no one is outside the realm of God's love. And so this night, this Christmas holy night, I invite us all to embrace your thisness, flaws and all, hurts and all, shortcomings and all, and even if you don't think you are ready to receive it, receive it anyway, because God's grace is big enough, and God's love is wide enough to cover all of our sins, all of our sorrow, all of our fear, all of our anxiety. Bring them forward with your hands extended. Allow God to take it from you so that the love of God can then enfold you like the swaddle clothes of our loving God as he came this night in Bethlehem. Amen.
the Nicene Creed, and for that I invite you to stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, who shall be God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin of Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. He will be the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. Lord, they flesh. Hear our prayer. You are pleased to welcome your creatures on the whole earth sings for joy. We know the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards, wise stewards of your gifts. And for the sake of generations to come, the Lord may be washed. Hear our prayer. Your authority, your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from the earth. And peace when there is war, compassion when there is suffering, and healing when there is disease. The Lord may be washed. Hear our prayer. You cherish those who are most vulnerable, protect infants and children, bless those who care for them, watch over them and give birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain, including those who can silently or out loud at this time. <clears throat> Shelter refugee families and those who have no home. Your joyful loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely for joyous. Comfort those who are us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind. Missing loved ones who are grieving. The word made flesh. Hear our You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory and give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with the lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by your example to hope, to help you to serve others. The word made flesh. Hear our Pondering the mystery of eternal life. Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also I invite you to share peace with those around you as you are comfortable at this time. <laughs> You may be seated as we continue with the office. 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. <laughs>
am the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.